For both locomotive and driver. For both locomotive and driver. For both locomotive and driver. Step back into the 1950s and feel the wonderment of these living, breathing machines. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. What we'll do, what we'll do, Matt, is we'll put the link in the chat if you've not watched the trailer because you get to hear some some really nice VO or voiceover from from Matt, uh, and also you get to watch some nice sort of period style uh, period style trailer there as well. If you've not watched it already, go to our YouTube channel. If you're on our YouTube channel already, then give it a whirl. It's a really nice video, uh, but it's the trailer for Spirit of Steam, which is why we are here tonight, Matt, because for the first time ever. We have a steam route into Train Sim World 2. How exciting is oh, that? Oh, my God, it's ridiculous. I mean, I think everybody, I've spoken a long time, and people who've known me for a long time have known how much I really, really like, I love steam, uh, and how much I've wanted it in, uh, in Train Sim World in particular. You know, that experience where you can get up and you can walk around and you've got so much going on, and it feels like you're really there. And now you've got steam engines really there, and they work like real steam engines. It's amazing. We are absolutely made up. Um, there is a lot we're going to try and show you tonight. We're going to try and keep this quite chilled and quite quite sort of flexible tonight because we want to be able to show you bits and pieces that you want to see. There's a couple of bits and pieces that we want to show you because we know that there are things that um, we'd like to be able to kind of get in front of you and to be able to, to help you out with some of the things that we know that you've been discussing already about how to perhaps um, utilize the brake properly uh how to there's a particular scenario which is causing a couple of a uh, couple of problems so we're going to go through that uh, and we're going to do a run from uh lime street to uh crew uh, and we're going to show you how to go up hills as well uh, we're also going to do uh, we did say that we were going to do some uh generation eight stuff don't worry sneaky we little support spoiler we already we did will. we will yeah i mean and what you saw actually <laughs> in the countdown was, was on that was PS4. live from the ps4 but yeah we're going to come yeah. back and do more yeah, we will do. We will do a short section on uh, Generation Eight as well consoles. Uh, so we'll be going on, moving on to a PS4 for the end part of the stream, just so that you can see that as well. We do fulfil our promises. Don't worry, everybody. Uh, but we are going to do. Uh, we are going to go through kind of the basics uh, to begin with, and then we're going to do a run. So Matt, why don't you take it away? Tell us all of the details that we need to know about Spirit of Steam, Liverpool Lime Street to Crew. Okay, so um, let's just do the basics that we normally do. Um, so you get your journey, uh, which has got a bunch of uh, chapters covering various topics in it. This one here is the uh, the one that's causing people some consternation at the moment, and we're going to show you um, how you uh, how you deal with that one and why it is the way it is. Uh, but all sorts of things that uh, that cover a variety of different tasks, um, some of which are freight, some of which are passenger, some of which are just light movements. Um, light movement meaning where you run the train on its own without any kind of coaches or wagons. So there's all sorts of stuff going on uh, on here. Uh, then over in the uh, scenarios, we've got some pretty fun stuff with the scenarios. So bovine blockage, um, there's cows on the line, um, and uh, gameplay. Moving cows. They're very, 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 we're moving cows all over the route, but they're, they're specially detailed and animated cows right next to the track here uh, because they escaped. So there's, uh, there's stuff going on here. Uh, tables have turned is... Um, a, uh, is at the crew north sheds uh, and you've got to uh, go on a couple up to a passenger service really reliable rescue as a passenger train broken down and your 8F uh, will be abandoning its wagons and going helping it to uh, finish its job uh, time for scouts I really like this one um, time for scouts you are it's kind of edge hill moving around edge hill um, uh, operating the, uh, the going through the yard getting it cold getting it watered uh, going and get some coaches bringing them down to um, to Liverpool Lime Street and AI then couples up takes them away and then you you head back up something like that it's just it's, i love that scenario it's one of my favorites and then worst winter of all um is um well it's i want to say it, terrible but i mean it in the best possible way it is uh, you'll be playing this one numerous times um <laughs> and you'll be loving it you know if, this... if, if you watch jamie last week you will know why uh because we tried to do this one uh, to begin with and he did not have a fun time of it uh, i think he really enjoyed it but 
Uh, he struggled to get out of the yard at the beginning. This is a, this is that sets the tone for the rest of it. Um, and uh, but there's there's some really cool stuff happening. So uh, this is a fun one. And then moving around the Mersey is a sandbox scenario, meaning that there's a bunch of wagons and a bunch of um, locos uh, and stuff all around. I think it's Edge Hill. Um, uh, it is Edge Hill. It says there on the screen, look. Um, and you can kind of do what you like within the confines of uh, of the yard. So there's no um, uh, there's no instructions there. You can just do what you like in that. That's the scenarios. They're awesome. They're really good fun. Um, and uh, they do a variety of different things. Uh, timetable, 135 services in total. You've got a, uh, 36 freight services with the 8F and 99 on the Jubilee. If we start off with the 8F, so essentially you've got um, some services that are starting around Edge Hill. We'll be starting in the sheds uh, and moving them over to collect your uh, train and then driving them somewhere. Um, so they're separated. So for example, this one here is the prep the prep service. This is then the run. Uh, in this case, just going down as far as Ditton Junction. Um, and then you've got an express freight services from Bassford Hall, which is just south of Crewe, um, up to Edge Hill. Um, there's all sorts of different things. There's this funny breakdown tour in here as well. Enjoy that. That's just an amusement, amusing little side. Uh, so there's all sorts of different things on the freight that you can do from loco moves to uh, to freight runs and a breakdown tour. Uh, Jubilee, you've got uh, again, you've got um, services like uh, Lime Street to Euston, which is a full length run. Um, you've got movements like Crew North Sheds to Crew. Then you've got the some of the stopping trains, the local services, which are the Chester to Lime Street or there's also some Manchester trains this is another express this is Preston to Euston so you'd be picking that one up from Acton Bridge uh, which is on the, the northernmost point of the West Coast Main Line that's, that's covered on the route and then driving that one south of the crew so again tons and tons of variety and different things to do here uh, some of them are really short so this uh, oh, you've got Manchester London Road so that's Ditton to Liverpool Lime Street so um, which is good so if you don't want to drive the crew the West Coast Main Line section is great if you want to have a high speed blast there's not a whole lot of scenery to see on that section um, so really sort of of um, the Chester to Lime Street are probably one of my favourite ones because it's just all rich, dense scenery and they're quite busy stopping services as well. But if you want a high-speed express run, there's some of that in there as well. And then you've also got a couple of named services like the Manxman and these are express runs uh, from, um, in this case, Crew to Lime Street. Uh, 38 minutes, so non-stop all the way um, and good fun. So that's kind of what you can expect. So, um, some of the services here, you'll be running light loco from Edge Hill down to Liverpool, probably tender first to go and collect your train. Uh, all sorts of different things going on with um, getting stuff ready and, and so forth. So there's quite a lot of variety there. So we were going to do a uh, Lime Street service. So let's do Lime Street to Euston. That Sounds will probably good. do. Uh, yeah, I'm interested to see actually for everybody, uh, for everybody's like in the chat, how quickly you've managed, or what's the top speed you've managed to get on the uh, the Jubilee? Because uh, I know there are a few people uh, in beta forums and all that trying trying to get it as quick as they possibly could do. Um, I know obviously with not within the uh, the realms of the speed limits that you would come to expect, um, but I think we saw somebody nearly get up to about I think about 95, 100 miles an hour. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, there, there was yeah there was some definite. Um, Stations missed, I think, in that in that instance. Um, Matt, do you want to kill our face cams? I will do. There we go. That's much better. All right, let's get the doors open. I've done it wrong again. I always, when I'm here, it fools me because there's a platform here, and it's not the right one. Because, as you notice, not my platform. So yeah, obviously we're at Lime Street um, and. We, do you want to do, do a quick before we get started, Matt? Do you want to do a quick tour of Lime Street? I, is that possible when you're setting up? I can do that. Let's just have a walk around. Yeah, we've got a few 75 mile an hours, a couple of 90 mile an hours in the chat. Can you imagine the cab sway? Oh, that would be fun. Oh my word! I've seen a few people saying, "Is it really this bad?" The answer is probably worse. Yeah, it really is fierce. Um, um, the way, the how much it. Uh, rocks and bounces in those cabs at speed. Um, they are uh, very difficult. Yeah. As you can see the clock is at the right time as well, which is I think a nice little nice little feature. 
I'm playing on PC now, just by the way. Yes, we will be going on to PS4 a little bit later, um, but this section is on PC. If you want to see what it's like on Xbox, uh, Xbox Series X, uh, which is similar to the PS5, then uh, head to our first preview live stream that we did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you can see what it's like on that. Oh, something else that's really important to note, actually, um, before we get kind of properly started into it, we've, we've kind of revamped all the tutorials for this particular route as well. I, we know we kind of get a little bit of look up, look down, left, look right, and we, I think quite rightly get a little bit of uh, uh, sort of flack for that. But we've kind of changed up the, the tutorials this time around, so hopefully they're a little bit more useful for you, hopefully a little bit more uh, beneficial in terms of teaching you how to operate things. I've seen a little bit of feedback on the semaphore. Um, tutorial um, and, and kind of how we can improve that in the future um, but please let us know what your thoughts are on the tutorials um, because we want to keep trying to improve them as we go through we want to try and give you as much information as you need to operate the the locos and, and get the best out of it yeah absolutely so we tried something different with the root intro this time responding to that feedback and you know what we've, we're tired of uh, learning to look up look down look left right for 800 time ourselves so um, but yeah we're always looking for ways to improve it Right, that is the uh, get the doors open. Sorry, get the doors open. Get the uh, brakes released. That's the brake gauge telling us what's going on with the brakes. This stuff up here works as well. Um, so what you can do here is you can um, you can close that, vent that to drop the water out of the gauge. Uh, I can then fully open it, and then when I regauge that, you can look at what comes up again. It doesn't really mean anything, but it's stuff you can play with. It's fun. Um, They'd use this for all sorts of purposes. So, for example, if the gauge glass broke, you've got effectively the, the boiler leaking, you know, blasting steam in, and you'd use that to seal it off um, to stop the uh, everyone getting um, boiled. Right, OK, so let's get going. Cylinder cocks need to be open. I'm on manual automatic firing, so uh, let's get yes. rocking. Do you want to talk? Do you want to talk a little bit about Matt? I don't know if we want to wait until we get going a little bit, but you, do you want to talk about the um, fireman options? I think that's probably quite important to, to highlight what each of the different fireman options um, provides in terms of autonomy for the player, but also perhaps what our plans are in the future as well. Yep, absolutely. So um, at the moment, uh, I'm running in what they call or what's the default, which is automatic firing. Um, and uh, with automatic firing, um, you do not have to worry about blower or dampers or putting cold in. With semi-automatic firing, um, I can't remember which way around it is. I think you, you no longer have to worry about the dampers. Um, and with manual firing, you do everything. Yeah, so there's kind of three options depending on how much uh, how much you want to take on yourself. Obviously, for, for complete beginners, people that have never done it before, we kind of recommend the uh, the auto fire, yeah, the auto fireman, just so that you can kind of get to grips with things. Um, and then once you become a little bit more confident, understand how the local works a little bit better, um, then actually you might be able to see what's on your uh, responsibilities of, of the fireman as well. Obviously, in real life, you would only do one of the two jobs anyway. Um, but uh, we would we'd recommend that you kind of do it. In that order. We are working on a fully manual option as well. Which will um, also improve the automatic. The automatic firing is, is quite coarse at the moment um, and the idea is once we've got the full manual working then there'll be an automatic fireman which uses those mechanics um, to uh, to add um, water and coal in so um, it's uh, it should be quite a, a big update actually when it happens. Yeah. Um, and again for people that are completely new to this, hello, welcome, it's great to have you uh, on our live streams and, and trying out uh, Train Sim World 2. Um, if you are struggling, um, we put together a really good, uh, in my personal opinion, a really good uh, mega thread on what you need to know. Uh, that includes all of the tutorial videos that we have, it includes all of the um, the kind of the differences between 8th gen and 9th gen platforms, uh, some nice uh, tutorial videos, all of the streams and the video and the articles that we've written about it, uh, and some operational guides as well. Um, I'm just going to put the link in the chat now uh, because I'd quite like everybody to take a look at it if they haven't already, um, but we found that it's really useful to try and put everything in the same place. It's also got some information on things that are going to be worked on in the future, um, as well as a couple of the sticking points that we've seen from the community today. Day, they are known and we are going to be showing you today how you can get around them. 
So we're coming up. What I wanted to start off here tonight was um, the, uh, the, the the steep climb out of Lime Street. I'm running them at the longest of the passenger trains. I think this is one of the longest of the passenger trains. Yeah, I'm running a 10 coach train. Um, so this is the uh, this is the sort of a challenge you want to get up. You're not going to get up it fast, um, but you'll notice my boiler pressure is staying up quite nicely, um, which means it's just going to keep gently accelerating. I can put a little bit more power on and just keep an eye on what's going on with the boiler pressure there. Uh, and we'll keep going up. It's practice. It really is just about practice. I'm gonna, well, I'm going to do... JD, you're quiet, so I'm going to turn the game volume down a bit. Which is a shame, but it is probably important to hear us talk as well, as much as as much as you might not think so. Is that better? Can you hear JD better now, folks? Uh, wonky sausages. Can you use Steam Loco zone off the rails on other routes? In yes, and there's already a whole bunch of creative uh, creators club scenarios been uploaded. Yep, absolutely. There's some really great um, they're both liveries and scenarios that have been created already. Um, if you are interested in taking a look, we do. I mean, obviously there are there are routes that this might be more appropriate for than others. I'd love to see it on a Rosa, for instance. Um, but uh, I think that there's some really great things that have already been collected in there. All you need to do is go into Creators Club and download them, and then you can play them. It's great. It's as easy as that. And uh, Creators Club again comes into its own with an update like this because there are so many brilliant creative people within the community that they're can kind of take what we've provided today and then take it perhaps to another level by providing these additional customizable options these new opportunities to to kind of play the game in a slightly different way it's really exciting mm. yeah yeah i was quite impressed with how just how much and how fast has already been uploaded someone's done the br black version of the jubilee already yeah uh, we've also got um, a couple of uh, liveries from Cat as well. I don't know if, you, uh, if some people watch the Let's Make a Livery live stream with the Barber Wagons. They're featured on the Creators Club at the moment, as are um, the uh, the Elizabeth II livery as well. We've done a little Elizabeth II livery uh, for the Jubilee weekend, so you can you can thrash that up and down the uh, Lime Street as well if you want to. Um, they're all on Creators Club on featured liveries, and we'll be sort of changing and chopping and changing those over quite a lot over the next few few days and weeks. So make sure you keep an eye on it because there's some really great things we're going to share on that. Boggy, someone's done an 8F filthy BR black livery as well. It's Creators Club. Chances are someone's already done. Yeah. And uh, we have, of course, seen. Uh, I've seen many uh, planned Thomas the Tank Engine uh, liveries as well. So Matt, we are approaching Edge Hill. Um, do we want to give uh, players a little bit of a view of the map? Yep. Let me just come to a stop. I expect you to do it whilst you're breaking, Matt. For the sakes. You're another one trying to get me to spare, aren't you? <laughs> I don't have to try that much, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts. Ooh. I, I say, I say that. Sting. Actually. I say I, I say this from the uh, the confines of, of my uh, my not having to kind of operate the loco whilst I'm also presenting a live stream uh, little ivory tower here. So right, let me uh, get away from the uh, the noise. And just enjoy yep. the loco from afar. Uh, go to number nine. Right, so we start up in the top left here. This is Liverpool Lime Street. Uh, you, can, you can see like Loco doing a, uh, a move at the minute. Uh, then up here you've got Edge Hill. So you've got Edge Hill Station here. Coaching sidings and stuff around here. You've got all sorts of sidings. This is the engine sheds. Very famous engine sheds. Um, 8A if I remember rightly. Um, and then as you come down from Edge Hill you've got Speak. Uh, again you've got another major engine shed here. Uh, along with some sidings. As you come across from Speak, you then get to Ditton Junction, uh, across the river, and over to Runcorn. Um, now, the, a lot of this, you're just on the, the accessible bit, is just up here, because all that's down in, down down on the ground in the docks. Um, but it's there so you can see it. Um, and then here, this is Weaver Junction. So this is where we join the West Coast Main Line. This is the world's first flyover junction. Uh, we follow the line down from um, Weaver Junction, this is West Coast Main Line, until we end at the behemoth that is Crew. More engine shed here, we've got Crew Station here, we've got uh, probably more engine sheds down here, I don't know, there's all sorts going on here. And this is Beskett South, 
at our basket yard, which is where you uh, you start. Uh, Basford, best basket, best Basford Hall, Basford Hall, then uh, B word something or other place. Um, and uh, I seem to get that wrong more often than not. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is this is crew. So um, it's uh, a busy, busy route. Right, yeah, and you said sure. there's a few kind of absolute behemoths of uh, of yards and sort of intricate, like arterial kind of lines that you go that go around all different places. It's it's quite a lot, quite a sort of a, a sight to behold and a lot to explore, which is obviously really uh, what we would love you to do. We want you to try and go out and, and see all of the different sites and explore and and find out what, what all of the mysteries of the route as well. Spot ejector is closed. No wonder it was taking so long. Yeah. A few things that are worth noting you might notice that our good friend, the uh, fireman, is, is currently not, uh, ha has invisible coal in his shovel. Uh, it's something that we are looking at. Uh, and there's also a couple of um, uh, instances in the tutorials and a couple of scenarios, I think, on different platforms where the uh, uh, fireman is invisible again. No, it's going to be fixed, uh, and the um, it doesn't affect the actual operation. It just means that they, they, it looks a little bit odd because he's not actually there. Something else uh, that you can see uh, if you haven't already is as the train is going along, you can see how it's blasting steam from different places down here, and that's because of the cylinders in different positions. This is a three-cylinder train. So you can see with the drains open and each of the cylinders are in the different positions, you see it blasting or not. So if I shut the drains off, then uh, that stopped that little bit of waste. But yes, just modelling the exact positions of where the uh, the, uh, the cylinders are. Absolutely. Uh, so we are quite a long way from, from Ron Corn, so I'm going to ask you some more kind of general questions, Matt, about, about Steam, because I think... Obviously, what we've focused on quite a lot so far is is the mechanical parts of the route, what players can expect, um, what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it feels like. But actually, from a developer developer's perspective, um, you got you must be really proud of, of everything that's kind of come out so far. And the, obviously, this has been a really long project. This is something that is probably unheard of within the the world of, of TSW2. I mean, this how is the single biggest thing we've done since we launched the game in the first place. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you feel about? How do you feel? How how, how are you? Um, now that you're out playing it, it's out in the open. What what are your thoughts? <sighs> you know, it's always this thing when you when the longer you work on something, the more your nerves are shot to pieces by the time it comes out, and it's just you hope everyone likes it, and you hope it's going to work, and you hope you haven't missed anything, and. Um, it's a great sense of relief, I have to say. Um, and uh, what I want to do now is just sit back and relax and enjoy it. Um, because I see everybody else. Uh, I've been watching a bunch of people today enjoying it and watching some videos. And it's uh, it's tremendous. And um, it's really, really good to see. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm so proud of what the team has achieved. It's immensely difficult, this route, on just about every level you can possibly imagine because it's historic route, it's a difficult historic route. Um, you've got a whole new tech for steam engines, new animation tech, the motion blur stuff, just anything and everything that you could possibly imagine. I asked the gameplay team to, to step up what they were doing with the scenarios and think about the tutorials in, in a bigger and better way. And, and Paul's actually been a really big part of this as well in, in terms of shaping the experience and, uh, and what we want to do here as well. So it's just been... Um, you know, everybody pushing from all angles, and it's the team have been pushing themselves as well. The number of conversations I've had with um, various members of the team who have been, um, oh, I did this bit and I put this bit in, and, I, and we wanted to do this bit, and it's just seeing them put so much passion into it has been um, inspiring, to be honest. Um, it, it really, really is amazing. Just the, uh, the the sheer work, just you know, on the the scenery, on the signals, on the physics, um, sounds. You know, everybody has been so engaged in this. Yeah, absolutely. And for those who don't know, Paul is our chairman. Uh, so 
this kind of has, has come all the way down from the very top as well as also from the very bottom upwards as well so it's kind of an entire company project yeah, which paul is, is really great to see paul is a massive rail fan if you go back to the very first article it was an interview with paul yes it was. Um, and um it probably it's probably good go back and have a read of that article and compare it you know the, the sentiments and the thoughts and what paul was talking about this is what he was talking about, albeit a long time before it existed. Yeah, I'm interested. I, I think I, that was before I even started. So that was Quite possibly. I mean, we've uh, been developing this now 18 months, two years. Which yeah. is ridiculous. It's so much longer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm, I'm, uh, there are a few people that are mentioning a couple of things in the chat. We are going to go into those in a little bit more detail in a separate section. Uh, one of them is to do with the uh, the braking at uh, uh, low speeds quite sharply, and it causes a derailment. Um, that is known from looking at it. Uh, we do have uh, a couple of, sort of suggestions from players if, if they are experiencing that issue. Uh, and we've also got the, uh, the mineral wagons uh, not having a, uh, at the moment, a uh, brake operation within the cab itself, um, so you have to go and manually uh, pull the brake cable uh, from each individual wagon. But we'll show you how to do those. Um, in, uh, in I'll explain why it's like that as well. It will make complete sense once I explain it. It's not technically a braking bug that you that you experience there with the derailment train boy. What it is is that um, you're slowing down with the combination brake. And you are when you apply with the combination brake. If you watch the BC value, which is the steam brake on the locomotive, you see it goes up quite fast. So you're now front loading a ton of brake on that train, and all of those wagons behind you haven't got the vacuum brake applied yet. So they come crashing into the train. Ones that are the back of the train hit the train with the hardest force and derail. It's a bit oversensitive at the moment, which is what we're looking at. But the actual essence of what's happening is there is just braking too hard um, and this thing does happen what you need to do is brake gently until the train has, has all sla un used up all its slack and then you can put hard brake on absolutely absolutely um, and uh, track joints as well uh, well you teed us up perfectly from this because yeah it is something that we are aware of it was mentioned in I think in the, the uh, live stream last week uh, the track joints are very very quiet um, and they are there they're set up correctly it's just you're not able to hear them very well um, and uh, we are in the post release patch which we hope is going to be um, next week or early the week after uh, we will be fixing those there is a fix in that build yeah we've got a handle on what that is um, and uh, we were testing that today so uh, all yep. good Yes, yeah, so there's a few other bits and pieces. Um, so all of the things that we mentioned as well. Um, I think that the, the braking, the braking one that we were talking about, is a slightly longer term thing. So we need to test a lot more for that. Um, yeah. So the fix for the braking one involves adjusting some physics behaviours, and it will affect every single coupling in the game anywhere. Yes. Um, and therefore we need to uh, just let that one have a little bit more time uh, for testing. Um, yeah. We have a fix uh, already. Um, it's just we want to make sure that we don't. Completely. Um, it, what, if we get it wrong, it means trains start exploding everywhere. So we want to try and avoid that. That would be ideal. Absolutely. Uh, so Wonky Sausages asks, are there sa sta uh, services that stop all the little stations that you're flying through? Yeah, if you run the services to Chester, the Chester Liverpool Lime Street services are the uh, are the um, the locals. That in reality wouldn't actually be run by a Jubilee. Uh, there'd be a lot less trains than uh, that are run on a Jubilee, so they'd be run by other local trains. Um, so, um, but yeah, that's where they've been added. Um, so you want the Chester Lime Street? They stop at every station, and they take almost as long to do a, a run just as far as Runcorn um, as this train will take to get. Um, well, actually, the Express even will take to get uh, all the way to the other end of the route. Yes, um, and Matt. Players are, um, players are experiencing uh, challenges getting up to certain speeds. It's, uh, it's because you're probably going to explain it better than I will, so I'm going to pass it over to you. In terms of if players are struggling to, to kind of get their speed up, what might be some of the, 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 the reasons for that? So the key thing is your boiler pressure. Every, every, a steam engine 
lives and dies by its boiler pressure. So before you worry about your speed, worry about your boiler pressure. If you're boil if you're driving in a way that you find that that boiler pressure, which is the top of the two gauges um, uh, down here, I don't think you see my mouse. So this gauge is a boiler pressure. If that is going down um, uh, significantly, it is allowed to go down a bit. You are allowed to spend your boiler pressure if you want to. But if it goes down a lot, then you know once it's gone, it's going to take ages to come back up again. So you need to um, manage that carefully. First thing to do is to make sure you're not wasting steam. Um, and one of those is this large ejector needs to be closed. If that's open, you're wasting steam. Um, you want to also be looking at your cutoff. You notice I'm running at 25%, not all the way forward. I brought it back to 25%. Uh, and I did that fairly early on, uh, particularly when I came out of Liverpool Lime Street there. Uh, and coming out of hard hills, actually, is a place you might find yourself really suffering on the boiler pressure. Um, so make sure you, um, you do that. If you have switched your, um, uh, your fireman to manual, then it is important you know what you're doing. And the key thing there is your dampers must be open. Um, now I'm running with a with the automatic fireman, and what happens is that you can see these, as people have been asking what these gauges are on the bottom left. The bottom one is the dampers, which you'll notice are varying between wide open and not, and that's because the fireman's got a little bit of a, um, a jitter going, I guess. Um, oh, cows. Um, and the top one <laughs> is the blower. Um, so at the moment there's nothing's happening, but if I shut the regulator off, the blower will get opened a little bit by the uh, auto fireman. Put the regulator back on and he'll cut the blower off for me. Uh, and he's doing that just to manage the boiler pressure. Um, and similarly, he's managing the, uh, the fireman is managing the dampers based on what I'm doing. So if I um, hit the, there you go, I've, I've hit their regulator a lot harder now and the dampers are now wide open. Uh, and the, what the dampers do is they bring in a ton of um, fresh air into, you know, if you're making like a barbecue and you put, they got the fire going and you you blow on the fire and it, and it makes it hot up, that's what you do in here. You're just doing this with primary and secondary air flows through the locomotive. And what they do is they keep the fire hot and they, that keeps the steam generation hot. Now even though we haven't got like full injectors and all the rest of it, managing the um, um, putting water in, the whole firebox is fully simulated. So the temperature of the fire, the temperature of the water, what steam is at, and all the rest of it is all being managed. So it is important that you manage the temperature of the fire. And like I said, if you run it on automatic, then the fireman will automatically adjust dampers accordingly, which will help you to some extent um, with um, dropping the... Um, with not having the safeties blowing off all the time. Because if I cut the regulator um, and just put it on a little bit of brake because I'm going too fast anyway, you see the dampers, you're starting to close them. Yeah, the fireman is now starting to close the dampers off because I don't need the steam generation, um, which will which will help. He's shut the blower off now as well, so the dampers are now closed. Um, that's better. See, so we've got 55 limit coming up. Rocking and rolling. Someone said to me, uh, I've seen some comments on the forums, were steam engines really this much, you know, rock and roll all this much? Yes. Is the short answer to that question. They may, they rocked and rolled all over the place. Right, we're coming through Ditton Junction, um, and um, just over here, actually, it's a sleeper factory. This is where they made the sleepers that, um, uh, that they put under the tracks. There's, there's all sorts of little bits of detail modelled in here, and uh, we did question the artist about why this was so low. But since you can't drive up here, it's not the end of the world. Um, <laughs> yes, because you might you might may have a significantly shorter train when you get out of that. Yeah. So there's all sorts of things going up here. Uh, this is so this is Ditton Junction, um, which we're not stopping at. Run Corner's our next station. I have to say, the signals are probably... The scenery is great, every, there's a lot of really great things, but the signals really stand out for me. Because I, I, there's been... There's so much technical research that has to go in. These have to be basically right, otherwise the route doesn't work. Right, let's get a bit more speed up. Slow um, down too much. One thing we haven't really talked about in any of the streams so far is rail driver. Yep. Um, Matt, I don't know if... 
have you are you are you a rail driver aficionado or is it uh is it perhaps something that we would sort of take slightly off of this stream and maybe follow it up with a forum thread or something but it might be helpful to kind of indicate what some of the controls are for for rail driver as well yeah no i worked with um the setup team to define what the rail driver controls would be um so the way that the one of the things that's quite neat um they implemented was that the cutoff controller or the reverse cutoff um this one um is done using a target setting so um you put it forward, say, halfway, and then it will wind it to about the 50% mark, essentially. Um, so you can put the reverse where you want, and it will wind it um, to where you want it to be. Um, cutoff is on the um, loco brake lever, uh, because one of the things that the, um, the the setup engineer found, and something I found myself as well, is that the, um, the normal throttle handle on the, which is great for American trains, it just doesn't give you anywhere near enough control over the regulator on a steam loco, so we've used the loco brake handle for that. Normal auto brake handle for um, the, um, the main brake. Um, then the headlights and the wipers, they're used to control blower and the large ejector, if I remember rightly. So you can use those three position switches to operate the blower and the large ejector. Uh, which is, um, you know, neat. They're the controls you're going to need anyway. Um, so there's all sorts of little things going on, um, going on there. So yeah, rail driver supported very well with a mapping that we hope is uh, going to be um, fun to use. Awesome. Can you just quickly, while we've got this shot, show the uh, the motion blur on the uh, mm -hmm. on the wheels, please? Let me just double check if motion blur is on, actually. Oh, it's under advanced on here. It's off. Let me turn it on. That's good. There we go. As you can see, the wheels are not exploding into a million pieces. And that applies to all the wheels on the train. Um, so let me ask, does this fix motion blur everywhere or just this route? I think it's just this route. Just this route. Yeah, we have, an, we have a handle now on what we need to do to make this work, but this is a this is a per model change. It's not a setting or anything like that. We have to go into every model and apply the new learnings and sort of, I don't know exactly what it is, but there's stuff to do on each model um, to uh, set it up so that it supports um, motion blur. So it is a, uh, I don't think it's a massively time consuming job, but this isn't just a tick box or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and this is, I think, again, one of the challenges of, of, of this particular route is that actually there is a lot of kind of individual stuff that all kind of compiles together into make what this what this ends up looking like and um i think we've talked a little bit previously matt about what the future of steam looks like on tsw so we're not going to go into that really tonight but as i say it would be um something that would set us up well to be able to then hopefully bring more steam related content in, in the future not that there's anything on the roadmap at the moment bingo cards out everyone um <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I guess this means that rather than a steam route taking us two years or more than two years to make, it would make the next one easier to make. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've got Steam Tech. Um, the way that the uh, signalling team built all of the signal assets and so forth, they were telling me they've got assets now that cover them for something like 50 or 60 years worth of signals. Um, you know, through, throughout a period of history. Um, you know, so um, it's. Uh, you know, there's a lot of investment gone down in tech and scenery and so on and so forth. So, um, yes, is the short answer to that. Is this the famous Runcorn Bridge that we were we were talking about uh, beforehand, Matt? The, yeah, uh, this is the bridge. Uh, you've got the original um, bridge over here. This this thing will actually carry cars backwards and forwards occasionally during the day. Uh, and then down here, you've got the uh, the foot plate, uh, one of the foot uh, feet for the the new. Uh, the new bridge that's in that you'll know if you, if you live in the area or know the area. There's a bridge here, um, and that's the uh, the beginnings of it being constructed. That's so good. And that, these are the kinds of things that I really like about the roofs because I'm a little bit of a history nerd. So I quite like having kind of the the bits and pieces that allude to exactly when that time happened. Because because that could only have happened in 1958 or the very late 50s. Because yeah. the uh, the, the development was like was growing from that point and it's, it's crazy to kind of think about like how how you kind of capture capture a moment in time i think is is is, is 
really cool for this kind of route. Yeah, it's um, it, it is. It's it's it's. There's a lot of little um, things like that that the team uh, the, the team have put in. Like even you know, one of the other things you can see all of the there's a canal boat down here in the lock system, um, and uh, lots of little detail like that that just brings the route to life. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, have we have we have we horned Matt? Say that again. Have we horned? Whistled. Whistled. Horned them whistled. whistled. Horned them whistled. We have now. Sorry. Yeah, I can't. I, I, I have to admit, I can't actually hear anything that we're doing. Um, that's that's my concession for the day. Uh, what we do when we set these up, we set them up in uh, in a particular way, which means that I can uh, I can hear Matt, I can see that what's going on on the live stream, but the audio I cannot hear. So we're going to need to try and find a solution for that in the future. So another thing that uh, I'll call out, I'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll go into more detail on, but we've um, one of the things that we've done for this route uh, is that obviously our characters, um, the um, uh, we only had modern characters before, or maybe 1980s characters if you sort of stretch it with the Northern Transpennine ones, and they're not really much cop um, for. Um, for what we need for this route, so we had to build a completely new set of characters beyond just driver and fireman. And, well, I, I've dropped the fireman off. Never mind. Um, yeah. You know, beyond just driver and fireman, um, then you've got um, the um, you've got you know all of the passengers on the platforms. There was nothing we could really reuse from previous, so it was very much a uh, build a whole new set. So it's kind of and all of the cars on the roads all new built built from scratch as well. So it's uh, this been a mammoth effort on just every front possible. Yeah, and um, as I say, there, there are obviously discussions about sort of anachronisms and do, do these things, like, are they befitting of the era, that kind of thing. Obviously, that there are going to be discussions about this kind of thing. Everybody's got a slightly... There we go, the bonnet, bonnet man. Uh, we found photographs of that, so that's real. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, there are obviously things that are going to be slightly different here and there, and we are... Uh, we take it all on, on board. We're we're obviously trying to make this the most kind of uh, representative, but obviously we want to try and make sure it's a, it's kind of an inclusive environment to be as well. So there have been a few discussions about that kind of thing, but we're we're kind of happy with with what we've got with it. The bonnets are definitely popular. Yeah, I mean, but they're, they're kind of boater hats, aren't they? Really, straw yeah. boaters, but. Um, I enjoy the hat. If I'm being if I'm being honest, I like the hat. I do as well. The other thing you can do, I'm just going to uh, step out, stretch my legs a bit here. Is uh, you can mess with the lights on the front. You notice when you hover over, it'll give you a a tool tip, which will tell you what the reminds you of the light formation, but also what head code type it is. So you can click on that, and then if I click on that, I've now got the head code for the royal train. Eee. Great for those Jubilee loop liveries. Absolutely, and they're so the Elizabeth liveries. So you can uh, you can try the different combinations out, and if you just search online for um, BR um, lamp codes or head codes, um, you should be able to uh, find one of the many 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 um, diagrams showing all the different types and what they mean. So basically, it's it's used for. So what I've got at the moment clasps. Um, B is it? Class A, which is a uh, an express passenger train. Um, class B, which is one light on the top, which is a local stopping train. Um, you know, all sorts of um, cylinder trains open. That's better. So there's all sorts of things. If you look them up, then you can make sure you use the right one. It'll also tell you what your speed limit is, because um, if you're sitting there looking at the train, you're thinking, oh, well, I've got freight, and it looks like only half of it is fitted. And I'll explain that when we talk about why those wagons won't release their brakes. Um, then um, you can you can sort of say, oh, well, that means I'm a class blah. Oh, that means I'm limited to 35 miles an hour. You know, so this stuff is all you know, the way it should be. Absolutely. Um, so Matt, obviously we said that we've got a couple of bits and pieces that we wanted to show the community. We've obviously talked about sort of getting the uh, getting up the hill. Um, and we're going to talk about some of those other bits and pieces that we've seen over the course of the day that players have maybe been struggling a little bit with. Um, one of the things, uh, and probably I've chosen exactly the wrong time to talk about this because we are just pulling out of the station, is actually to do with uh, regulating the braking. 
Um, and I think when we get to the point where we get to the next station, which is Hartford by the looks of things, um, we, we could probably talk a little bit more about the how we utilise the brakes in the loco to kind of come to a, a smooth stop. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll talk also more about um, when we get to freight. Um, some of the pre uh, preventative measures for your um, for for coming to a stop, you can you can independently control the loco steam brake um, away from the vacuum brakes as well. So you can stop that this thing becoming a lead weight in front of all the wagons as well. Yeah. Bound for Hartford, which is on the West Coast Main Line. So, uh, obviously, you might have noticed, hopefully you've noticed by this point, you've been watching for the entirety of the, the stream. We actually have the other, we have a new HUD element as well. Um, I don't know if we, you've referred to this, Matt, when you've been talking, um, but we've got the, uh, we've got kind of a new element to the HUD on the left-hand side. Do you want to go through it on what each of the yeah. so boiler on the, parts mean? On the top here, you've got the, this top circle is the boiler pressure. That's how much steam you have to play with. Um, and your job as a driver is you're consuming that. And it, well, the uh, fireman is technically in charge of generating steam. You're in charge of consuming steam. You're therefore, a joint effort to make sure you don't run out. Um, the uh, arrow in the bottom here is telling you if it's going up or down so that you don't have to stare at it and see if the needle's moving a pixel one way or the other. Um, um, so it's uh, so if it's up like you can see, so essentially it's holding about the right thing at the moment. I'm going to just put a bit more regulator on. Um, the button below here is the steam chest pressure. So if I just go back up to the loco, um, this is the steam chest here. So effectively, the the main part here is your sm uh, your boiler. Um, and when you open the regulator, it lets the steam down into here, which is, and it's then pushed out into the, uh, to, it uses the steam in here to push the cylinders backwards and forwards. So you can actually see why it's, it's pulsing up and down um, um, in line with the chuffs. Um, and then essentially, once it's done with it, it ejects it out of the top, and that's why you get the chuff coming out of the, uh, of the, ch the, the chimney at the top. So um, this is what's going on. Now, where that's useful is um, that, you know, I can keep putting power on, but there is little point putting it on. It can't because I'm going uphill. I can't really do it. But there is little point putting any more regulator open once you've already got maximum pressure, which is the red mark here, going into the steam chest. There's just not much point. You're really just wasting steam at that point. So um, you should um, you can use this to know exactly what's going on in the in you know that's your closest element of control um, with the. Um, with what's going directly to the wheel, essentially. Um, there's lag in how that works, and this, the, this icon here tells you if the drains are open. So if I open the cylinder box, you can see the drains are open, and you'll find that the, the steam chest vents quite quickly. If I close it and open it up like this, if I then shut it down... OK, so it's because I'm still moving. Difficult to show this stuff when you're actually moving, but um, let me just cut this cut off back a bit further. That's it, we're gaining boiler pressure nicely now. Let's pour some more power on. And then the bottom left here, the bottom one is the dampers. There are two dampers, front dampers and rear dampers. Um, and this is the state, combined state of both of them. So they're both open, which they are at the moment, then all three of them are filled. And if only one of them is open, then effectively it's only two bars. And it fills effectively 50% of it. The top one um, is, the, um, is the blower. So I don't know if it'll let me do this because of the air water thing. There's the blower. And it turns it off because it's, again, I'm not under, um, I'm under, map. I'm under automatic control here, so I shouldn't mess with the controls. But I can turn on the blow, and it can keep turning it off for me because I don't, we don't really need it. There's no point in having the blower while you've got chuffing going on because the, the chuff is far, far more powerful than the blower is. What the blower does is it ejects steam up inside of the chimney out the top. 
and he uses that to draw air through the fire, combining with the dampers and the firebox door as well for secondary air, um, to actually again help warm the um, to get warm that fire up and, and get things going better. Um, so uh, normally, if you're chuffing, you've got enough draw because you can see all this coming through here is drawing air through, and if I cut the power off then the fireman will also put the, the uh, blower on. You can see that this here is the, the effect of the blower. Um, the, it'll do that to, um, to continue drawing the fire. The danger in reality of not drawing the fire in one direction is that it can have a nasty tendency to come out that direction, and you don't want that. The fireman and the driver do not want to see that. So that's, that's the new HUD on the bottom left there. And uh, we are uh, boodling along at a very sedate 20 miles an hour. It's a hard climb out of here. I think we're not far <laughs> off the hill now. So yeah, I think from, from a steam perspective, it's a bit of a... Um, if you're not used to it, it is a little bit of a, a change of way of thinking of, of operating loco if you're, if you're used to kind of more modern stuff um, but it, it takes a little bit of practice I think once you kind of get used to it you understand the uh, the reasons why and the kind of the, the, the mechanics of, of why it's done is the way it is yeah. then you can kind of get get your head around it and, and it becomes a lot more of an easier process and again you can listen to Matt talk about this kind of thing all day so well, don't forget we've got the um, the video on YouTube. Um, have you posted the link to your mega post, JD, recently? Uh, many times. Okay, cool. Many times. Do go and have a look at that mega post. There is so much great information on there. Um, there's just, links to the videos. To do it, we also did a quick sheet. Uh, well, the creative team put together a uh, like a, a quick sheet, which might be worth printing out, keeping to one side, or having accessible on your phone, which has got some quick guides for how to get started, uh, how to accelerate, how to slow down. You know, general guides for how these things uh, these things work. So, uh, what the um, these two gauges on the brake mean, what everything means on the bottom left, and also just a general tour of what all these controls are in the cab um, and what they're called. So, if you're forgetting, I want I know I want the thing. Where's the thing? Um, that that is a handy reference to have until you get the hang of it. So, hopefully, um, that'll be um, uh, that'll be enough to help you. Yeah, and uh, that that is also on the Mega Thread as well. So uh, you kind of get back all bang for your buck there. Um, I've just shared it in the chat and uh, take a look at it, uh, particularly if you're finding a few elements of the um, the loco challenging. There's lots of good stuff in there um, and helpful kind of tidbits and, and, and information there. So enjoy. right, we've, we've made it up to the top. And it's now a downhill run to the West Coast Main Line, if I remember rightly. There we go. Let's get some. Let's get some speed up then. And one of the things to remember with steam engines is the answer to slow speed is not just more regulator. Um, you know, worst case you'll spin the wheels, but in that, in, in, even if you don't spin the wheels, you're probably just wasting steam, which actually is going to end up working counter to anything, and you're just going to run out of steam faster and stop. Um, so. Um, Keep an eye on your boiler pressure, keep an eye on your steam chest pressure, um, and uh, manage it accordingly. So I'm doing 42 miles an hour, boiler pressure needle's gone to vertical, so actually I'm going to dial back the power a bit, and just let that boiler pressure come back up a bit more, um, and then I can hit the uh, hit a bit more power on there again. Just it's a, You work with the fireman to manage your boiler pressure, it's not just you've got an infinite supply. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Very much so, yeah. Question in the chat: How long is the new route? I will grab my crib sheet. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's about 20, uh, 36 miles, 58 kilometres. But there's lots and lots of like. I mean, in terms of the actual track. Let's have a quick look again. Edge Hill. Yeah, there's about 80 million miles worth of track here. <laughs> um, and then you've got Speak Junction down here. This is the Ditton Junction here at the Sleeper uh, Factory around the corner over the bridge to run corn. So we're almost at Weaver Junction actually now. And if you missed it, 
start you get uh, five scenarios and they're five quite kind of bespoke scenarios for, for five scenarios scenario. in the sandbox scenario yeah uh, and you uh, is it 135 services I seem to think off the top of my head yes that sounds about right yeah uh, across both the Jubilee and the 8F so uh, that's kind of I guess it's historically accurate to uh, to to what we what we've been able to replicate in in, the, in this particular route. But those those scenarios do kind of go the scenarios those um, services do kind of go from all over as well. You've seen on the on the list to begin with, you're having ones from Houston, uh, from Manchester, um, and a couple of others that I cannot remember off the top of my head. Matt, help me out here. Oh, services. The, you've got the local services, um, the Manchester to Liverpool ones which start at Ditton Junction. You've got the Chester ones which start at Runcorn, and those are all stoppers. Um, you've got Liverpool, so the the ones that start, um, that go from Crewe um, to Lime Street. This is crossing over the West Coast Main Line now. Welcome to the first flyover junction in the world. Um, and we are... And you've got the uh, some of those are stopping occasionally like this is an occasional stopper some of them are non-stop um, and then you've got a, a bunch of, lo of loco moves yeah. oh you got the max as well i remember that one i love that movement it's just everything feels alive steam engines again i think said someone earlier i've seen comments saying does steam engines really rock around that much is that just is it really that bad? And the answer is yes. You know, they didn't have the precise track laying techniques that we have these days, and the trains had have the suspension that we have these days. Um, so while the coaches, you know, were smoother, there wasn't much smooth about the locos. Because not only that, you were also, as well as the track, you've also got these big pistons forcing the loco, the whole physics of the loco, bam, you know, around. So actually, it was um, you were in a mainline steam engine, you know, doing these kinds of speeds. You were holding on, seriously. You are holding on. Whoops. Yeah, speed of it. <laughs> Who needs it? Um, so, a couple of mentions about render distance on, uh, on the route so far, and I, I mean, I don't know if this is a particular relation to. Uh, to console or to, to PC, um, but obviously there are differences between uh, eighth generation and ninth generation cons uh, platforms. Um, the the graphics are slightly different. Again, in the mega thread, again bingo cards out. Everybody the amount of times I mentioned it tonight. Uh, there is the, the full breakdown of what the differences between eighth gen and ninth gen are. Um, in terms of things like the, the more general kind of render distance, even on PC, is that something that we're we're looking at, or is it something that we're happy with? Render distance won't be changing, though. No. I mean, those are the same as the, the render distance is the same across all platforms. So this is a red light I'm coming up to. Uh oh. Breaking, breaking tutorial. Here we go, Matt. No, I'm. This is no breaking tutorial. This is throw out all the anchors tutorial. <laughs> uh, Seven hundred yards, and we're going to train in front of me. Uh oh. <laughs> no, we're fine. We're fine. Five hundred yards and we're stopping like a rock. done here is you think we've caught up with a local. How have we caught up with a local? We're miles behind. We're miles behind, yeah really. <laughs> oh, okay. What probably happened there then is I guess I've what we've probably found a uh, West Coast mainline service and we've ended, we should have been ahead of it. But because I'm so far behind, you know, tour of Liverpool Lime Street JD. Um the hey, uh, <laughs> I'm giving the people what they want. Um, yeah, it's basically allowed that train to get in in front of me. So yeah, a few people do ask me, you know, is it possible for trains to get out of order? And yeah, very much so. 
it's it a somewhat dynamic dispatch of a transit world. Um, you can't reroute trains, but you can definitely lose your slot, which is what's happened here. Who knows I'm going to be stuck here for, so we'll get stopped and then we'll have a look and maybe we'll... Uh, uh, well, I was going to say, over. actually, does this, feel like, does this feel like a good opportunity to maybe try out the... Um, the braking one. The braking, yeah. I'm just going to say, I mean, I, obviously as exciting as it might be to be stuck here for in excess of... Uh, well, a, a fair amount of time. Um, maybe this is a good opportunity for us to maybe come back to crew in a bit. Or is, yeah. is that left out now? Is no, he's already out? gone. Yeah, but we'll be we'll, we'll be following that one down now. That one's. Um, but uh, yeah, let's go. Okay. We'll okay. see how far we get. There are a couple of mentions about layers onto West Somerset and North Trans Pennine and all that kind of thing. Um, not at the moment. Um, it's something that isn't like, it's not on the roadmap, but it's something that, as I say, we've been talking about internally. Um, obviously, we want to try and get the most amount of, of use out of these particular locos we possibly can do. Um, it might well be something that happens in the future, but no promises. Um, Similarly, with other kind of uh, substitutions onto this route, it is kind of in its own little ecosystem at the moment. Yeah, there's, but thankfully, the, what we are seeing is um, already is quite a lot of people creating scenarios in Scenario Planner. I'm showing on Creators Absolutely. Club, so there is already quite a lot of opportunity to use these trains on West Somerset, Northern Transpennine, and, and other routes. Yeah, absolutely. I really recommend checking out Creators Club. There's so much good stuff already, and it's only been live for a matter of hours. So, um, really recommend that if you are wanting to try and diversify and get those locos onto other routes, then yeah, use Creators Club. Um, off the rails mode is is good as well. If, if you're not aware of that, I mean, you can take any loco onto onto a, a particular route and, and get, go out for a spin. Um, so if you're looking to, if you love the locos and want to use them elsewhere, then there are a couple of options that you've got. All right, here we go. We got a green starter, so we we'll see how far we get down. Got all these poor passengers waiting for some, waiting for a, a train and just going straight past them. I should have got on the one that stopped there, shouldn't I? Really? That, 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 that one was a very trick to be fair. So the question, I guess, would would be worthwhile asking at this point is how should I have known that that was a red and not had to put the brakes on emergency? The answer is what they call distant signals, and if I've been paying attention um, and, and not chatting with streamers and so forth, uh, or with well, viewers and so forth, um, you would have you'd have seen the uh, the yellow distant and behaved accordingly. So actually, there is a signal here with a red signal; it's a stopping signal, and a yellow signal is a distance. So that is telling me I can proceed past this signal, and the yellow is telling me the next signal is also green as well and if that yellow if the red one the, the red signal was up and the yellow one was down then um, I would um, uh, I would be telling that would be telling that's effectively like your, your yellow signal it's telling you to um, to stop for the next signal essentially so you keep watching your distance now the other thing that's different on this route than has been on any of the other semaphore routes we've done in the past is this correctly models the um, the way that a distant controls multiple signals not just the next signal so if the next signal is a home into a station and there's a starter out of that station then um, that distant would be only um, in a green position if both of those following signals are on so it's a bit it's tricky to explain and to understand but suffice to say if you go past a distant that is on uh, which means that it's um, it's in the down position um, then treat you, something up ahead of you is not in your favor and drive cautiously or there might be a speed reduction the distance are used sometimes to slow drivers down ready for speed reductions. Yeah, so semaphore, semaphore tutorial as well. I know there is there is a tutorial in the game already, yeah. um, but uh, it's a good introduction to uh, to using semaphore signals. Uh, correctly modeled semaphore signals as well.
Right, we'll drive to Hartford and then we'll switch over and do the uh, freight one. Okie dokie. Just to keep things uh, moving. Yeah, it gives us an opportunity to show some of the rolling stock as well. But yeah, we've been really, um, thank, you, thank you everybody who's given us feedback so far. It's really good to see um, how you are, what, what you're doing with it, how you're, how you're, uh, how, what your thoughts are on it, um, and the kinds of things that you're looking to, to do kind of enhance the experience of, of Spirit of Steam. It's, it's always good to get constructive uh, feedback from people, and I think the majority of stuff that we've got so far has been just that. So thanks everyone for, um, for being as, uh, as constructive as they have been. So I've been using some unhelpful language, um, and I talked about signals being up and down, because now we're near crew, we're in the world of lower quadrant signals, where down is good and up is bad. Um, so basically, let's just call it horizontal means stop or caution, and uh, up or down uh, means to uh, to watch what you can watch what's going on. Right, we're almost at Hartford now. Apply a little bit of brake. So I'm just applying a little bit of brake, and what I'm doing is I'm managing um, the uh, the vac level up here. Um, which is the vac indicator down here, and I'm just using it to manage this, this level of it, so some 17 or so. And you can't set it to A level and lock it there, there's no lap state like you would be used on the 101. But you can see we're slowing down nice and gently. If I need to release that, I can just release it back off again. In fact, the vac at 21 means the brakes are off. Actually, this is another good example. So this signal is telling me I can proceed past this one, but my next one, or group of something, is not good for me. That probably means actually either the home into the um, that probably means a starter out of Hartford actually is, is uh, red. Yeah. It just did it went green as you were going past it though, Matt. So I did don't it? know if that's right. yeah. I don't know. Again, I think you're probably following the uh, the other loco. But it's, that's the sort of thing you're looking for. That's your warning. You're coming up to a red light. Yellow means prepare to stop and all that. Yep. Had a couple of people suggest that this was uh, this was badly placed, and it's completely prototypical. This next signal you're seeing here is exactly how it's supposed to look. 300 yards to Hartford, just the other side of this, this uh, bridge. That train seriously big, big for this station. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a small little station, isn't it? This one. Yeah. to be smart and completely missed. <laughs> oh, <man. sighs> it was going to happen at some point. Well, I thought, well, oh, it'd look cool if I sort of pull into the station. Then, of course, I realised I can't see the train, so I can't prep it. It's going to look dumb. And it looked dumb. There you go. Right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, welcome to, uh, welcome to Hartford. Uh, right, let's go ahead and so the problem that a lot of people are having is with in the journey chapter two um uh, bah, 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 bah. So if I could continue chapter two section two, which is this clock face colour speak junction. But what I'm gonna apply uh, talk about here applies to anything like it. I'll tell you what to look for. Uh it won't just be on this one specific thing. There's a few times it shows up. Um, and it is something being, that's uh, already been fixed in the uh, for the for the next update. We don't have a date for the next update yet, but it won't be long. So this train won't release its brakes. Now, this is a mineral wagon. These do not have brakes. These are what they call unfitted wagons. And you can tell they're unfitted not just because they haven't physically got brakes, but because they're grey. That's what the difference is between the grey and the bauxite coloured wagons. These have brakes. These have vacuum brakes. And then on the back of the train, we've got more mineral wagons which are unbraked. The problem here, my friends, is that these have their brakes on. And because they are not connected to the steam train, you can't release their brakes. This is why you can't make it move. How do we make this move then? What we do is we go over here. Now I'm going to do it with the 8 camera. Um, actually, no. I'm going to walk out. You can do it with the camera, but I want to see what I'm doing. So, um, let's... Uh, Climb down. 
put my torch on with the L key or D-pad right. Now down here you will find there is this cable here, the vacuum brake release. Pull it, 10 seconds, it's a bit of a slow process, it's a pain, it will get you going though. There's no hiss, these things don't hiss, they don't make any noise, I did ask somebody because I was surprised there was no hiss there, but they don't. Um, there it is. So it's interesting because obviously this isn't necessarily what we what we would wanted the experience to be because obviously we want it to be operational within the actual cab itself. Um, but it does kind of throw up a slightly interesting dynamic that actually probably nobody would have recognised this was a thing. Uh, and although it's annoying, yeah, we get it. It's uh, it does show kind of I guess that that this is a workaround and that there is a uh, an opportunity to maybe utilise something that you would never have used before. Yeah, it's it's we, we added the feature so that you could operate these, and um, ironically, we may, it, we ended up with a with a, an issue, uh, which meant that you have to. So it's um, but it does mean that um, the brakes will come off. Don't confuse what I'm doing with the uh, the handbrake. This is the uh, vacuum brake release. You only need to do it on these because obviously the other ones don't have it. Retrograde is technically a bug and it will be fixed. It just means that these wagons should have been moved up to being right next to the locomotive uh, and that will be fixed. But at the moment, so that you can get going, you can use these vacuum release cords um, to, uh, to get going in the meantime. Nearly there. I'm blind. There it is. Again, as, and, and in back in the day as well, would this have been done in in the cab, or is this a would this have been done manually like this? I, I don't know the answer. If you have a question, train so. that's set up like this, this is what you'd have to do. If these trains have managed to get vacuum, I'm not sure how they'd get vacuum, but if they've managed to get vacuum, then you would have to do this. Um, but what yeah. would happen is that um, the train would be set up correctly, so that your vacuum, your va your brake fitted wagons should all be up against the locomotive. Yeah. No, you don't, Randrew, because um, these are not connected to the brake system at all. Um, so when you, because they're not connected, there's a big old gap there with these grey wagons. There's no pipe. They don't even have a through pipe. Those wagons. Sometimes you'll find brakes. None, of, none of these ones, but some of the older wagons, they actually have. Uh, they even though they're, they're unfitted, they have got the brake f uh, pipe on it. So you have what they call a through pipe, um, so that you can put them in and still have braked wagons behind them. Those mineral wagons aren't. They're completely unfitted, which means that in this particular case, these. You, you, when you release the brake and you create vacuum in the brake pipe, um, the um, let's get off the track for a minute. You um, you know it doesn't generate. This hasn't this, this the brake pipe between these is not connected to the loco, so it won't see. It doesn't get that vacuum. What we should find now is that um, when we uh, release the brakes, which in this instance will just be the locomotive, um, we should just get going. As long as I've done that right. So yeah, this is intended to a. Uh, this is how you can get going now and keep keep driving, um, but uh, not suggesting this is the uh, the full fat fix. No, there we go. We're not going until we're going. It's raining, so. <laughs> but yeah, we're so rolling that's, now. That's something that we'd see a few players ask about today. So that's how you operate those and. Um, 
Matt, can you just say the instances where that might be a challenge for, for players until we're able to get the uh, the patch out, which so I think you, is going to be either next week or the week after? If you find yourself uh, unable to uh, to remove the train after you know a minute or two minutes, should be more than long enough for the the created vacuum to um, release the brakes on the train. If you find it's still not going, have a quick look at the train. If you have any mineral wagons. Bet and you've got uh, between the locomotive and uh, you've got any mineral wagons before bauxite wagons then um, your brakes aren't going to come off and you need to go and run through all the bauxite wagons and manually release them you should have what you should find is any bauxite coupled to the loco will get the vacuum from the loco and they'll release fine so if you've got a bunch of uh, minerals at the back end of the train it's fine yeah you don't have yeah. to worry about it so uh, yeah, this will be um, fixed in a in a future update. Uh, it is currently in a build, or is very imminently going to be put into a build. And we're hopefully going to get that out next week, or the week after, or early the week after. So as you can see, all going no problem at all. A little bit of a pain just to get going, but uh, it will mean that you can carry on and finish the journeys. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Matt, shall we d is there anything else you wanted to show on PC tonight? Is there anything else that we haven't either seen in a preview stream or that we think would be really good to be able to, to get in front of players tonight? Or should we go on to PS4? Um, I can't think of anything. I'm just trying to think about the, the questions we've been asked. I think we've pretty much covered them. So, um, yeah, let's do PS4, and if we get anything else come up, we can pop back to the PS PC at the end um, yep. and uh, and look at that. I'm hoping my PC PS4 controller doesn't die because it's just started complaining. Right, yep. okay, let me switch over to this. Uh, oh, hello, face cam. And, and turn these I've off again. You. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, face cam. Right, so this is PS4. There we go. Oh, I've got two bars of battery. We're good. We're good. Right. What I'm going to do is just restart this one. Yes. Now, what I did do on here is I royally messed with the colours. Um, I was going to say the colours look different. Yeah, I royally messed with the colours. Let's try that. That should look better. I was trying to work out why it was coming out so dark. And it, because certainly on the on this console, it's not got HDR, and it was set up to to import HDR, which is why it was all wrong. So this should be better when I get the game back up again. So yes, we're on PS4 now. Um, I'm waving the controller. I hope you enjoy me waving the controller with the cameras turned off. Um, and um, we are, if I remember rightly, this is a service starting at Crew. Cool. When it finishes loading. Obviously we're on Gen 8. Things are a little slower. Yeah, so um, let me just quickly... Again, throw the uh, my favourite uh, mega thread into the chat again because it does detail some of the differences. We're not going to go into all of the details of all the differences tonight between eighth gen and ninth gen, but you can see them all in the link that I've just thrown into the chat now. Um, there's a se separate section on eighth gen versus ninth gen. So the frame rate when it starts is a little bit struggly, but give it a minute. While it does the passenger loading, I'm just going to unplug the keyboard in so I can turn the frame rate counter on. I mean, this is not going to be 60 frames a second, right? But just let's just be clear about that. Yeah, I'd say we're. Is it? You say we're at crew? Yeah, we're at crew. So this is the worst part of the route. Um, yeah. I think. In, in terms of the, not not in terms of the general kind of the, the worst part of the route. This is the most frame rate. The most the absorbing. most difficult. Yeah, yeah, the most difficult part of the route. Worst from a, from a frame rate perspective. Um, so let's get the uh, this um, down to maximum. The other thing I'm going to show you is face full of particles and how it doesn't have any impact on frame rate. Which, you know, if you've ever used the um, the diesels, um, you'll uh, you'll know that a face full of particles that you can barely even see um, absolutely decimates your frame rate. Which you'll find this doesn't. This is because this is using a brand new particle system, so. Right, get the doors shut. Drains are open already. There are some controls actually you can access from in here if you use the um, the controller. So there's a new shift, uh, an operation shift, which is the steam shift. So if you press and hold X or A on a, um, 
to cross on a PlayStation controller or A on the Xbox controller, then the left joystick now controls the large ejector, uh, up and down controls the small ejector, um, and you've got, oh, I can't even remember what all the other ones are. Um, press and hold it, left control, uh, use the left, click the left stick, you can operate the cylinder cock. So you've got a reasonable control over uh, the locomotive even when you're just using your X outside like this, which is quite handy. Right, let's get those brakes off. Brakes aren't off yet. Loco brakes just about released. Train brake is coming off. Just on the main HUD. Um, Matt, mm. so you've got a couple of you've got the, the vacuum brake and uh, the what number what kind of numbers are we looking for for those when when you're in various different stages of the operation? So for the brake cylinder, which is which is the BC refers to the steam brake um, on the locomotive, the local brake cylinder for the just for the locomotive itself. Zero means off, and big number means on. Um, shut that off. The vac is the vacuum brake, which applies to the rest of the train. The vacuum brake doesn't actually, it's not how the locomotive works, but it creates a vacuum for the rest of the train to use. Um, and 21 in that instance means off, and zero means completely, uh, uh, it's, you've they've got no vacuum at that point, so everything will be applying its maximum brake. Cool. Frame rate will actually get better as we, uh, we get moving. Yeah. As, as we say, uh, crew is probably the most performance intensive area of the route just because there's so much here. Yeah, I mean, just just a reminder, okay? Nightmare time. Just cut the power back a minute while we uh, get to the speed limit increase. So you'll notice things like the, this is a lot a lot emptier in terms of other stock. Not in terms of AI trains, the same number of services um, is, are on service mode on Gen 8, but the uh, static stock dotted around, um, there's very little of it in Gen 8, uh, whereas there's quite a bit actually dotted around on uh, Gen 9 and PC. Gen 9 and PC use the same timetable. Yeah. Just a reminder that this is PS4 we're driving on this point, folks. This is PS4. <coughs> yes. Because we promised that we would, and here we are. But as you can see, it's starting to kind of get a little bit more consistent, a little bit better as we're, we're leaving crew. And uh, as I say, I would imagine it's only going to get better as we go through the route. Yeah. It's not too far now before the frame rate comes a bit higher. Can you do the, um, uh, is it sensible to do the, 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 there we go. Just throwing everything we possibly can at it and uh, it's still going. There we go, 21, we're starting to get out of the reds now. pressure at the minute. There you go. Trim the regulator off just a little bit to get the boiler pressure to come back up. Very playable on the uh, Gen 8 consoles. Not, it's obviously not going to give you the same experience a Gen 9 or a PC would, but we're looking at 24, 25 FPS there now. crew goes away, it's, uh, it's all a lot happier. Cool. Okay. Um, are we happy with moving back to PC? I'm just trying to think if there's anything that we want. In the chat, is there anything else you would like to see tonight from us? Uh, so we'll try and be as, as 
as accommodating as we can be. Um, I heard a couple of requests for looking inside the coaches. Um, maybe we can do that, Matt. Okay, let me just pause that, switch back to PC. So I'm, I'm asking a lot of you tonight, Matt, from a, from a technical perspective. That's but right. you are you are uh, doing very well. <laughs> I've got it set up knowing you're going to be demanding, so it's all good. Yeah, this is true. This is true. I'm a, a demanding customer. Uh, let me work out a starting time of a service, and then we'll go and um, wander and explore it before it leaves. So we have a service, Lime Street to Chester at 7.11. So if we spawn in at 7 o'clock... Sounds good to me. That sounds good indeed. Timetable. No, what are you doing? Press the wrong, press the right buttons. Explore on foot. But, uh, we'll go for a nice July, a bit of cloud, and we'll spawn at seven o'clock. Yeah. Um, Andrew said, "We do. Did we talk about breaking in freight to prevent derailing?" We uh, should do that. We should do that. Yes, let's do that. We'll do. So we'll do the looking inside the the cabs then we'll do the braking um after that thank you for the reminder because we did say that we were going to do that got a train coming in over there look bill has asked if the passengers are from 1950s yeah we tried to where possible um provide them with uh kind of the the clothing and the um uh well yeah i guess that's the clothing uh, that they would be expected to see at the time as we can see some of them are coming onto the station right now some of them are in the carriages so we should see that anyway there we go first class dressed up into the nines triplets <laughs> he, he, go, he looks a bit out of place he does he definitely doesn't look like he should be in first class does he well we mustn't judge we absolutely mustn't judge, no. But um, he does look like a stowaway rather than he fits in with the rest of uh, the, the clientele there. Yeah, so that was an FK, uh, first class corridor. Uh, this is a TSO, a trailer second open. Thing to remember with the uh, Mark 1 coaches is that. Um, um, Okay, you, uh, I think that must have been the door. No, okay, oh, I'm going to shut up. I thought that we needed to open the window to open the doors, but maybe we changed that. Um, so there's, um, yeah, there's the TSOs, the FKs, and this one at the end here is called a break second corridor. Uh, break second open. Yeah, break second open. So this is a uh, break, uh, the break coach here is where the, uh, the guard would sit. And he can sit on the thing here and he can play with the break if he wants to. Um, and uh, play with the coach lights on, you know, all sorts of fun clicking things in here. Uh, this is where luggage and parcels would go, uh, or unruly oh, yeah. passengers. I was going to say, that looks like a prison cell, doesn't it? Well, it could be used for that if necessary, but... Alright, here I we go. The races. Uh... Yep. Toilet in here, which is, uh, of course, engaged. Bicycles, yes, that's another thing you can put in there. I'm just wondering. This could be worth waiting for. This could be fun. I've not actually seen this, so this might be terrible, but um, I have a sneaky suspicion this train comes down and uses a turntable. And I've got to say, I've, as much as I know that it can use the turntable, because otherwise we can't make the time the timetable. Um, I've never actually seen it work um, with an AI train, Ooh. so this could be, uh, like I said, this could be thrilling or um, terrifying. It's just uh, coming down through Edge Hill, and there's um, service where you do this as well, um, and essentially they, they, the train comes down, turns around, goes back up, and then reverses down into the train. And what I would say there is, um, when you... Um, when you do those services, trust the red lights. Um, 
But it's just that we had a um, we actually had a um, a bug raised and it got re-raised two or three times uh, where people were saying the service doesn't work. You just get stuck at a red light, and there's a three or four minute wait. And it's because first there's a passenger train being routed down, and then um, and then it takes a minute before you get the clearance to go. And eventually you do. It's quite fun actually, sitting there watching trains moving around. This one I'll come down here in a minute. You can see he's got he's got the signals. Uh, coming in, he's on the he's in the corridor. We're on the move. We're on the move. He'll be down here in a minute. I keep saying he all the time. I really should get out of habit. Everyone talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this opportunity to talk a little bit about... Um, I, I mentioned about constructive feedback, and uh, one of the really great ways that you can do that to try and um, provide anyone that's looking to kind of get into Train Sim World 2 or to, to potentially uh, get this, this add-on and be able to give us, have as much of an informed decision as they could possibly make is through reviews mm. and if you are whatever you think of the, the the piece of content whether you really love it or if there are things that you perhaps don't like quite as much about it we really recommend that you you kind of submit a review for it either whether it's on steam or or xbox or, or whatever um just because it, it gives people m much more of a, a well-rounded opportunity to to see what what's up with the with the um with the, the add-on uh, in this case spirit of steam but this is a more general thing as well yeah. it's a really good way to be able to, to kind of prov say your thoughts and, and let us know what you think um again we hope it's all positive and if it is then brilliant um but as i say if there are things that we need to be looking at then please let us know as well through there so right it's a call, see the a train. call to arms everybody let's get everybody in steam and let's get as many reviews as we can yeah totally yeah so you can see the train coming down now and um it appears to have this lack of chuff problem as well, so I'll make sure that gets on the uh, on the uh, the chuff master's um, work plate for tomorrow. Yeah, we've 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 logged it already um, with with uh, with the QA team, so they should be taking a look at that. We're going to look at train derailing in a minute, by Blue Way M. Actually, um, there's a reason for it. It is going to get a fix to improve it, but the fix to improve it is quite a challenging one to test which is why it's not out. We've had the fix for a little while. Um, but uh, it potentially breaks everything else. So we need to be a bit careful and make sure it's all good. So uh, we're going to get that underway soon. Um, but yeah, four-wheel wagons come off the track very easily. Um, and uh, what's happening is that when you put the brakes on, it applies the brakes very quite hard on the... Um, um, on the locomotive and that causes all of the wagons to bunch up and of course the rear ones have got the longest distance to travel to to bunch up which then causes them to collide and come off the track here it comes right fingers crossed Everything will be fine. Should we find it's not. Oh, he is going on the turntable. Hey, that would have been a. Uh, that would have been a total letdown. Yeah. If it just flips to the right place, I'm going to be sad. <laughs> That's so cool. I'm well happy about that. Turntables have been such an absolute pain on this route. Um, because while well, turntables have existed since day one of Train Simulator CSX Heavy Hall, um, they have never been exercised in any way, shape or form like they have on this route. Because they're fundamentally essential to how this, this route works. 
There you go, folks. Fully working turntable. We flip that loco round. And off it goes. And off it goes. It will then come up, go up and then come down and back up onto its train. But we won't wait for that. But there you go. That's awesome. I love that. Lovely stuff. Right, let's come out. Right, well, let's do something with the uh, with the AF. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, an AF service. Yeah. Just while you get that set up, Matt. Uh, the turntable's animated on eighth gen, isn't it? There's no difference in. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say. I, was, I think that would be. The quite turntable a is fundamental to the entire timetable. Yeah. Because of the way the steam engines really, they never ran these things tender first on the main line. Uh, particularly, yeah. so you'll see them running tender first up and down the corridor uh, between Edge Hill and here, but they will turn them at one place or the other so that they always lead um, uh, smoke box first, um, yeah. and um, yeah, it's it's essential, so it has to work. Yeah, and, um, um, on, and we've got uh, just when we've because uh, someone's mentioned about preservation crew updates, James Baby. Um, so West Somerset Railway, I believe, is in uh, a f not. I'm not sure. It might it might be the next batch of preservation crew up there more more on this on the uh, roadmap uh, streaming next week um or roadmap article next week uh but in terms of preservation crew content we released house check around Ruhr, uh Ruhr's ignored uh and um, rapid transit yesterday um so again thanks for everybody that's been providing feedback on those it's good to see that they're by and large have gone down really well with you you guys um if you haven't tried those routes in a while it's worth doing um but we are aware that there are a couple of things that we need to, to take a look at so uh we have fed those back and we will be taking a look at them in the uh in the coming weeks so this train is all bauxite wagons which means the brakes will work fine talking about the brake releasing thing you can see here there's a formation here which wouldn't work properly and another one over here so if you find yourself running a service which couples these up then you'll need to do the manual release on these wagons in the middle to make them work just keep an eye out for that. Yeah, it's like it's like when you look at um, uh, venomous snakes and you're looking for particular patterning on them. Uh, <laughs> you go like black, I think it's like black red, some black red, black red, or something along those lines. But it's very similar with this, in that you're looking out for the patterns of the uh, the um, uh, the track. Well, the the, the wagon and the train. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Right. Okay. So we're at Bassford Hall here. Um... Oh, that's what it's called, is it? <laughs> Bass, I guess so. Yeah, I, I, it's one of the B names. I'm just calling it Bassford Hall today. Um, let's get going. So yeah, we've got 0.8 miles to go. Um, this is uh, because we've seen a few people talking about um, braking sharply under under. Uh, I want to say temperatures. It's not temperatures. Uh, low speeds. Um, and causing a derailment. Um, now, obviously in, in real life there are possibilities that kind of thing might happen. Uh, this is probably a little bit harsher than we would like it to be, so we are taking a look at it. Um, and uh, we, as Matt has insinuated earlier, um, it's not a fix that is something we can just do for this route, it's something that we need to test on lots of different routes, so it's going to be a bit longer to, to come across, which is why we want to show you today how to uh, mitigate it, how to kind of get around um, and make sure it doesn't happen to you. It'll, it'll be, it's a matter of practice and experience. I mean, I said that I'm probably going to derail the train, you know, it's to date, he says, really throwing the uh, everything out in, in one go. I've not derailed it. So there you go, I've said that it now. That is a bold statement now, Matt. <laughs> um, so, um, we're going to be stopping in 0.6 of a mile. It's only running slow. Actually, it tends to be slow where you have more of a problem. Um, now, watch the steam brake, which is the BC, uh, um, versus the vacuum. If I apply some brake here, you see that it's going up, and it suddenly goes up really fast. Right? And it's now 100. That's about half a brake. I'm, oh, I'm running about 50% brake on the on the loco, and the train won't have caught up with that yet. Um, now, with reasonably gentle braking like that, it's, particularly, it's probably not going to cause too much of an issue. Um, but, you know, you can be tempted to just put on a bit more brake and jam the brakes on. And what will happen is that um, you'll find that the loco brake comes on much more harsh um, than the rest of the brakes do, particularly on a long train like this. It takes time. Same with the American trains or any train, really. It takes longer. And vacuum is worse because vacuum is rubbish. Um, and... Um, you can see the speed at which that's applied. Um, 
So what you um, in fact you can see. I don't know if you noticed that then actually. As I released the brake, it suddenly got kicked and started moving a bit faster, and that's because of the tra the wagons on the back bouncing around. So if you if I switch over to here and just apply some brake, you see how they're crunching together like that. Um, that's because of the uh, and the fact that they're moving again. See, this is the the pressure from the back of the train forcing it. So you can imagine, with that little bit of slack, how much the entirety of that back of that, that whole back of the train is going to concertina. And your job managing these little through these little tiny little wagons is managing that concertina. Now, when they're all fully crunched up like this, they're all compressed. You can brake quite hard, and you shouldn't have any problem with it. You can see, in fact, you can see. The front of the train has stopped. It's at zero, and that's now um, caught up. So you can see the spring now of them. Of them. So what you got to do is just be mindful of that concertina, so that um, when you apply the brakes, I would apply a little bit of brake to get started. Of course, typically the uh, we're wheel slipping at the front now. Let me come back up front and get going again. So I'd apply a little bit of brakes um, to get started, and then wait for it to concert to give it, you know, time to concert to compress the train, and then you can apply more um, in there. Now it shouldn't be this sensitive; it completely shouldn't be this sensitive. Um, but I know from people that I've spoken to have said, but it is quite hard, you know, if, if you're not um, careful. That's one of the reasons. In reality, you've got the brake van on the back because the guard in the brake van should be applying the brake to keep the train stretched out uh, but because there's no brake van uh, the guard is not simulated um, the um, the uh, you don't get that benefit so you're managing the train from the front which is perfectly possible just not ideal so what we're going to be doing is just toughening up the physics so that um, it will still be possible to derail I'm going to be completely honest with you but it's appropriately possible to derail whereas at the moment it's a bit sensitive um, so, so the other trick, I'm just trying to get a bit sped up here, is this thing here. So this is your steam brake, and this is the steam brake hook. Um, so um, I can use the steam brake hook to affect what's happening with the um, with the with so the steam brake. Again, this is your loco. So if I pull that on, you can see the brake cylinder value is going up, and that means I'm applying the loco brake, but I'm not using the vacuum. And similarly, if I apply, so I can. I, I'm. I need to go and find out why this isn't working the way I was expecting it to. Because you used to be able to release the uh, steam brake um, separately. I clearly, lost my mind somewhere. Oh, we've got a red light here. Again, I'm applying a little bit of brake. Oh, I'm making sure that I've got. Um, if I get let the vacuum brakes apply on the wagons. If you find yourself rushing to stop for a red light, you're already sunk. Don't rush your brakes, that's all I can say. But now we've stopped, I can put the brakes on properly and I'm waiting for that light. That light probably isn't going to change to get up to it, is it? Where is it? It's there. Yeah, it requires quite a lot of careful management, this. Liam, uh, yeah, exactly. Liam says there's, there's still a probability of drive, but it won't be one. It's not one now. If you're careful driving the train, and you need to be careful in reality, then you won't derail the train. Um, the change will make it less sensitive, so that it'll be, it'll be uh, you know, you'd have to be a little bit more, quite a bit rougher with it to get, to get it to derail than it is at the minute. Cool. Matt, have you shown everything you would like to see with that then? Because what I would say is what we'll probably do is we'll probably timestamp this uh, section and we'll put it into the mega thread as uh, as we've talked about beforehand as a little useful guide for, for people to, um, if they're struggling. Ah, well, that went well, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, we were due one, weren't we? This always happens. 
Never mind. What can you I can say? Be sometimes too careful with the brakes. <laughs> And well, I wasn't really, stop. I wasn't really paying attention properly. I was kind of like, oh, that'll be fine to stop. Let's have a look and see what chat is saying. And then looked over. We've not stopped yet. No. <laughs> so I will be clipping this up and saying, do what Matt does until he. Until spats. this bit, and then stop doing what Matt does. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to call it there for a night, everybody. Thank you very much for all of your comments and your questions and your requests. Hopefully we've been able to get through kind of the main bits and pieces and help you through any of the challenges that you've had in the first sort of few hours of playing the route. We hope you're enjoying it. Remember, please give us your feedback on the forums, on our socials, uh, and leave a review if, whether uh, you have a really constructive thing to, to let other players know about as well, or you want to let us know something as well. That's really, really helpful for us. So, Matt, just by way of kind of finishing up tonight, um, if a player were to kind of come into this for the first time or is a little bit unfamiliar with, with Train Sim World 2 or Steam locomotives in general, what kind of is the one piece of advice that you would give them um, if they were kind of stepping foot into it for the first time? It's a couple of things. First one, watch the tutorial video we put out. Um, it's a really great intro to the basics and have it to hand. It's all broken out into chapters, so if you just want to know one bit, you can jump straight to it. Um, and that will give you a lot of familiarity. Second, watch your boiler pressure. It's absolutely king if you watch that boiler pressure and take steps to look after that before anything else. It's like they say, if you look after the pennies, the pounds look after themselves. Well, the same tries with the boiler pressure. You keep that boiler pressure good, and everything else will follow well with it. Wise, sage words, as ever, Matt. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, everybody, for watching at home. We really, really hope you enjoy this, because it has been a labour of love over the course of the last couple of years. We've been pulling this together, um, hopefully, over the course of the last few few months that we've been talking about it you can see that you can go back through all of the different live streams and the videos and the art uh, and the um, articles that we've put together and see kind of how much has gone into this um and this is very much the beginning we want to try and keep doing this kind of thing in the future we want to try and make sure as i say that everybody is getting a fully fleshed out train sim world 2 experience and that obviously includes steam within it so if we can kind of use this as a benchmark in the future this gives us a really good um sort of yardstick to go from so we hope you enjoy it we hope you are um giving it a go and as i say one of the things that i will point out just quickly before we finish is remember scenario planner remember creators club remember off the rails mode if you do want to try it out on different uh routes or you want to try the locos out on different routes or you want to try a different loco perhaps on on this route then use off the rails mode uh or, or check out some of the amazing stuff that's going on on creators club because there is some real variety that, that kind of it's offers amazing. uh to the route as well or the locos as well so check that out um let us know what you're thinking and uh we hope you all have a lovely evening from matt i'm not going to answer for you but good night good night everybody and before we just before we sign off i am just going to say big shout out to the whole team that was involved in creating this really really proud of what everyone's done and um hope you all enjoy it good night, everyone. have a lovely evening everyone bye-bye <laughs>